In my female 24 family, there is a new tradition, and it is to plan a baby shower for the pregnant women in the family. This time, it was my sister-in-law's 37 turn, and they spent a lot of money on decorations, food, and gifts like she was a queen, which I don't care at all, but it hurts. It hurts because when I was helping decorate some things, I said something like, for my baby shower, I wanted the same flowers because I really like them. And my sister, 36, told me that I already had a baby shower this year, and that should be enough, but there won't be another baby shower for me until I know what birth control is. It hurts because ever since I got pregnant, the second time, they tell me all the time how dumb I am or how much I'll regret this in the future. And whenever they say those things, I just ignore them. Or I laugh, and I did the same this time. I just laughed and pretended that I didn't care at all. I did that because I honestly thought that they were just joking, and they weren't serious. The other day, my husband asked me, in front of my family, if he should tell his mom to come for the baby shower. She lives like 14 hours away, but she adores our babies and loves to help with everything that has to do with them. For my daughter's baby shower, she helped a lot, so he wanted to know the date so he could tell his mom. But my mom said that this time it was my sister-in-law's turn and that I was not going to die for not having a baby shower. I couldn't help it, and I cried, because I thought I was as important as her to them. And if that had been all, I would have attended. But later my brother, 40, called me and accused me of being envious and told me that I just wanted attention, and that's why I got pregnant again, to overshadow his wife. And a few more things that broke my heart. I couldn't stop crying, and my husband who was with me hung up the phone for me and told me not to go, that it was enough and that I should cut them off. I did what he said for the first time, and that didn't work, because now I'm the villain. They said that my sister-in-law spent years trying to conceive, and now that she finally got pregnant, I was ruining everything. They said she cried and she didn't know why I didn't go. I didn't tell her anything, because I didn't want to create problems between her and my brother, so I wanted to know, am I the idiot for not going? Edit, I'm expecting a boy, I have a girl, and that's why I thought that they would help me plan the baby shower. Also, my husband and I paid for the first baby shower. I don't want them to pay for it for me, I just wanted them to help me plan it like they do with all the women in the family. You are the idiot, you don't get a baby shower every single time you have a baby. It's not like a birthday party. Baby showers are meant to help provide you with the things you'll need as a parent of a new baby. And on top of everything else, you did this in the middle of preparations for a shower for your sister-in-law who struggled with infertility? She is having her first child at age 36 and you centered yourself and your demands for parties and gifts to such a degree that you refused to go to her shower and then threatened to go no contact. Um... Yeah, you are so wrong, and you sound dreadfully petty and self-centered. You owe your brother and sister-in-law a huge apology for ruining their special time. Not everything is about you. Are you sure that's universal? For example, my family's always had baby showers for every baby, except the one pandemic baby, of course. In any event, we don't shame a mom for having more than one baby, or deliberately celebrate everything to do with one person, but not the other like Jane Austen villains. Not the idiot. Not having enough money, time, or resources for two baby showers in one year does not justify their treatment of you. OP, I'm so sorry. Everyone's the idiot here. As a general rule, baby showers are for your first baby. I think expecting your family to throw you another shower when you already have one baby is a bit on the nose and honestly, pretty tacky. You already have all the baby stuff. However, the way people handled this was cruel. Comments about learning what birth control is and accusing you of only getting pregnant to overshadow someone else are cruel and unnecessary. You deciding not to go is not an idiot move. I do think that you probably could have let your sister-in-law have her shower without you and your husband bringing up your pregnancy. Let her have her moment. OP said in the post that she hadn't asked for any gifts for her first baby shower and wasn't asking for any for the second. She also mentioned that she didn't want it paid for. She just wanted to celebrate the new life she was bringing into the world. So she literally paid for the first one, but everyone else was so quick to shower the sister-in-law with gifts and pay for the celebration. She's not the idiot, 
as her family is treating her like crap and like less because she had another baby so soon. I, female 24, was invited to my parents' 45th wedding anniversary dinner. There will be about 10 guests and it'll be held in my parents' home. My ex, Jordan, 23, was cool with my parents when we were together and they called him their son. When we broke up, Jordan didn't respect the fact that I was not into an open relationship and decided to have one anyway without me. My parents took it as hard as I did. You'd have thought he died. Anyway, I now have a wonderful boyfriend who I've been dating for almost a year. He was also invited to the dinner. I called my parents to confirm the guest list because my mom asked me to make some finger foods and was told Jordan was invited. I was shocked because I hadn't talked to him in nearly three years and I assumed my parents hadn't either. I told my mom, hey, I get it's your day, but I'm bringing Amir, my boyfriend, and I'm personally not comfortable with being there with Jordan, especially because it's a family affair and it's saying he's family. She just said Jordan's coming whether I like it or not and should make me uncomfortable. I discussed it with Amir and he agreed that it'd be best if we didn't go because the entire evening wouldn't be enjoyable for either of us. I did talk to one of my friends, but she basically said I would be an idiot for not just putting up with it for my parents' sake. So now I'm very conflicted. Am I the idiot? I'm sorry, what? He cheated on you? And your parents want to invite him to a 45th wedding anniversary? I mean, yeah, it's their party, but that's crazy. You are not the idiot, OP. Good to know they value your cheating ex over their own daughter. Not the idiot. Your mother is crossing a major boundary, especially given the reason for the breakup. She's incredibly disloyal. Tell her this. Mom, I'm sorry, but I will be unable to attend. I cannot celebrate the longevity of your relationship when you put priority on a cheating ex over me. I am very disappointed in your decision and heartbroken to know how little importance my parents put into fidelity, honesty, respect, and love in a relationship on this of all days. You are the idiot. I'm assuming Jordan has been staying in contact with your parents over the past three years, and you probably haven't as much. I don't see them randomly inviting him after not talking for three years. Also, I understand for your new boyfriend that it might not be the most enjoyable night, but suck it up, buttercup. You skipping this dinner isn't going to make things any better. Not the idiot. You can honor your parents' anniversary in more ways than just attending an intimate dinner where your cheating ex from three, three years ago, will also be included. Buy them a nice gift, drop off some finger foods, offer to take them out, just the four of you, and call it a day. This is such a bizarre hill for your parents to die on. But the worst thing is that her mom said to her, come or don't come, your ex is still getting invited whether you do or don't. So basically, she's putting the ex above her own daughter. So why should the daughter attend? The mom is so weird. I'm going to start my post by saying that I don't have kids and have no experience with babies or motherhood or children. I'm 18 and beyond being around them in group settings where at least one of the parents and a ton of other people are around, that's it. I say this with some context to my post. My brother's wife had a baby 17 days ago. I didn't visit them yet, but my brother and sister-in-law sent me some pictures. My brother said our cousin Rachel was around a lot because my sister-in-law is having trouble breastfeeding and Rachel is a big believer in it and is helping her. So I offered to help them if I needed it. And on Saturday, they asked me to go to the grocery store for them because no home delivery had an open spot. When I dropped the food off, I was shocked at how bad my sister-in-law looked. She looked like the walking dead, barely awake and had not showered. And she was crying because she was so frustrated. It scared me how bad she looked. At first, I didn't want to butt in, but it bothered me so much, I went back to the store and got a can of baby formula. I figured it would give her a break and my niece could eat. It was even worse when I gave it to my sister-in-law because I said it was no big deal if my niece got formula. It wasn't a problem. My sister-in-law broke down and I was honestly scared because she was weeping. Like in the movies when someone died kind of weeping. No one told her it was okay not to breastfeed. She felt so guilty because of Rachel butting in and no one telling her formula was okay. I ripped my brother a new one because he sat back while my sister-in-law suffered. There was no way he didn't see how bad she looked. No offense, but she looked terrible. I got my sister-in-law to shower after my niece ate and fell asleep. 
and I changed the sheets on the bed and told my sister-in-law to sleep while my niece slept and I said I would get more baby formula. I thought I did the right thing because my sister-in-law actually stopped crying, showered and slept and the next three days she looked better and didn't cry again. My niece gets full. My idiot brother smartened up and told Rachel to stay away and everyone else, especially our parents and sister-in-law's parents, to butt out. They take turns feeding so they both can sleep. My parents and Rachel are furious with me. Sister-in-law's sister agreed with Rachel and left me an angry voicemail full of swearing. Rachel had sister-in-law holding the baby while topless 24-7 and my dumbass brother sat there and didn't help with the baby at all. Rachel breastfed all her kids until they could walk and talk and never had problems, but my sister-in-law did. My dad said I overstepped and should not have butted in, but this time I was scared after seeing sister-in-law on Saturday. Since I'm not a mother or baby expert, I have no idea what it's like with a newborn. I'm second-guessing now after feeling like I did the right thing because everyone is angry with me and says I should mind my own business. Not the idiot. You probably saved the baby's life. Husband should have taken her to the hospital and they would have probably done the same thing given the baby formula. Unfortunately, some people are so smug about thinking they're right that they ignore the facts under their noses. Not only are you not wrong, you're also a smart, kind, and loving person. OP may have saved both the baby's and sister-in-law's life. Holy crap! How did it get this far before any of the other parents or older people said and did what OP did? OP is not only not the idiot, but also a freaking savior. Just telling this poor mom formula was okay was a saintly move in this situation. But then OP stepped in and did stuff that should have been done for this poor mom days and days ago. Not the idiot. The breast is best crowd seems all too willing to allow suffering. But the reality is, fed is best. And you did a good thing for your sister-in-law and the baby. Honestly, the breast is best people remind me heavily of so-called pro-lifers. They don't care about the baby just as long as they can control your body and what you do with it. I wish more people would understand this. Also, while there is no significant difference between breastfed and formula kids, there is a significant difference between kids and sane parents and kids with parents that struggle. All parents should know that their sanity will greatly impact how they treat their kids and that being their best selves is way better than all the breast milk in the world. My brother dated Addie for two years. My parents liked her, but they didn't want my brother to marry her, so they were happy about the breakup. Five months after the breakup, Addie contacted our parents to ask them to tell my brother that she was pregnant because she couldn't get in touch with him. They never told him. Instead, they told her that if my brother were involved, they would make sure he got custody and she would never see her baby again, but that they would provide financial support if she kept this quiet because the child was still their blood. It's obvious which choice she picked. I used to be close friends with Addie before she dated my brother, but she cut contact with me after they broke up since it wasn't a good breakup. However, we still have mutual friends, so we reconnected about three months ago, and she told me all of this a month ago. Their son is a toddler, and my brother found out two weeks ago and was livid. He blamed Addie and was awful to her, and blamed me for not telling him as soon as I found out. On Sunday, we were having a family dinner, and my dad and brother were strategizing on how he would get his son full time. I interrupted and told him he couldn't do that to Addie, because she acted in fear. My brother exploded at me and was ranting about how she had kept his son from him and now she would know how that felt and that I had already shown him who my loyalty lies with since I had never told him immediately. My parents agreed with him and telling me off too. I got annoyed at their hypocrisy so I told them the truth about our parents and now he isn't speaking to them at all and they're blaming me for it. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Would you please testify on Addie's behalf if they try to take her child? Your parents are disgusting humans and are making your brother one too. None of this is appropriate. When both parents are capable and willing, it's 50-50, not 100-0. They would only get that judgment by lying and claiming things like sugar use, endangerment, or mistreatment. Please call them out in court, please. Everyone's the idiot here. 
Secret keeping is the easiest way to destroy family relationships. Clearly, the biggest idiots in this situation are your parents. Totally. You are barely involved. And for your parents to sit there and let you take heat from your brother tells you everything you need to know about them. Your brother is the idiot for strategizing to take his child away from the only parent the child has ever known. He clearly doesn't give a crap about the kid. It turns out Addie's fears were correct and your family is totally toxic. Holy smokes, your family is awful. Not the idiot. Your parents are the worst here. I feel so bad for that kid stuck in the middle of all of this. Should you have told your brother right away? Maybe, but I get that it's an awkward position as Addie having this child isn't your information to share. It's hers. And sharing that info about your parents when you did seemed like it was to help the child. Your parents have no right to be mad at you for outing them on this. Your brother wanting to punish both Addie and the kid by taking the kid away from her. That's so wrong. Give Addie a heads up. Tell her to start looking into lawyers to protect herself and her child. Everyone's the idiot here, but your brother sucks least. It won't be good for him or the child to take the child away from mom if it's even possible. However, his being furious with you, Addie, and your parents is completely understandable. Everybody else sucks for obvious reasons. Nobody told him he had a child. I was talking to my mom on the phone a few days ago about random things. I always hosted Christmas at my house, but she told me she wanted to do it this year at her place. I was completely fine with it, and I was happy she let me know in advance. Everything was going well until she told me nobody was allowed to invite their husbands. I got extremely confused and asked her why. My mom said my tween niece, Katie, has recently become very depressed because she doesn't have a father in her life. My mom said she wanted to make Christmas special and inviting fathers would make Katie upset. I told her I wanted to spend Christmas with my husband and kids. My mom didn't like this answer and called me selfish. She said I could split the day, but I didn't want to leave my husband alone on Christmas. His family lives in another country, so he wouldn't have anybody to keep him company. So I called my sister, and she said that it was both her and my mother's idea. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your mom shouldn't teach your niece that shunning all men is the answer to her having no father. Being around other male relatives who can act as father figures of sorts would probably be good for her. That's exactly what I was thinking. I didn't have a mom, but the other women in my life, grandma and aunts, more than made up for it. I can't imagine what kind of man I would have become without their love and influence. What your family is planning is wrong and counterproductive for so many reasons. Holidays are to bring families together, not separate them. Not the idiot. What a bonkers response. Niece doesn't have a father, so she should also be deprived of other male family figures for the holidays. I'm assuming your niece isn't a goldfish and will remember the existence of other men in the family even if they aren't there. I almost wonder if there's something else going on here and this is just an excuse to exclude your husband. OP, maybe try talking to Katie's mother and feel out her take on this because this is super weird. I talked to other women in the family and their husbands slash boyfriends aren't allowed. Only men who are related to us are coming, like my uncle. Also, I did talk to my sister and she said it was a good idea. Honestly, I'm wondering if Katie is depressed about not having a dad or if she's depressed about her mom complaining about being a single mom all the time.